بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله continue on our study in the treaties the method of the salaf the methodology of the salaf as uh, salaf al salih and the ummah's need for it we were mentioning that the uh, Sheikh Salim bin Fazan mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh, he mentioned and used this as evidence to show that the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the path of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the path of the Khulafa Rashidin al Mahdiin, the rightly guided successors to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meaning uh, Abu Bakr, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ijma'een, that this is the straight path. And that we should adhere to that path. We should hold steadfast, regardless of the criticism, regardless of the attacks, regardless of the skepticism, and all the various critics that attack us in, it, in trying to adhere to the method of the Salaf, that you, you should adhere to it. You must adhere to it. And he gave, he mentioned the hadith, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al khulafa, wa sunnati al khulafa, rashidin al mahdiin, adu alayha bi nawajid. The Prophet ﷺ said, uh, it's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided uh, Khulafa Rashidin al Mahdiin, the, the rightly guided uh, successors. Uh, and that you should bite or cling to it with your molar teeth. So that's a, sh a very severe cling. And the ulama explained the mo molar teeth, your molar teeth are here, they're in the back of your jaw. In order for you to cling to anything with your molar teeth, I think these are called your incisors, your, your front teeth. Your molar teeth, in order for you to adhere to it, if I had a miswack, I would demonstrate, but I think it's sufficient. That means you are biting something. You, they, it's totally, you're totally, uh, your mouth is totally surrounding it. You're completely clinging. In order for you to bite something this, that means you have completely, uh, you would have to, uh, fully bite and cling to it. So this is a mithal, or an example, or a similitude that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned to show us how much, how strongly we have to adhere to the sunnah. And you can find within yourself often change environment. The more you get away from seeking knowledge, the more you get away from sitting with the ulama, you become weak. I know this about myself. And it can make you begin to question the madhab of the salaf. And question, or even if you don't question it, you begin to weaken its importance. So this is something we hope that Allah will give us the strength to be upon and to adhere to and to cling to, and to not give up. And may Allah increase us with further ilm, so that way we can practice it and have fiqh, and how we understand the madhab of the salaf. Because it takes fiqh, it takes understanding. Then he mentioned the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is it's the same hadith, and it's in the beginning of the hadith. And this shows us where the Prophet ﷺ gives us the, through prophecy, that he shows us that there's going to be a problem. And he then defines what that problem is going to be. And the last hadith, the, the hadith we just mentioned, or the other later part of the hadith, gives us the the medicine, or gives us the cure for that problem. So here, he, the Prophet ﷺ outlines the the problem, the issue we're going to have, how to resolve, and how to resolve that issue. So here, the Prophet ﷺ said in that hadith, فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدِي فَسَيَرَى اخْتِلَافٍ كَثِيرًا And then he said, فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي So the Prophet ﷺ said, Indeed, whoever lives after me will witness, witness many differences. SubhanAllah. That statement is so profound. Whenever we reflect upon that, and we see about all the issues that we have, SubhanAllah, we have issues, of course, with groups like the Ashadis, with groups like uh, the various Sufi groups, which mostly have Ashadi uh, aspects of Aqid, especially with Al-Asma'i Sifat. 
we have issues with the Tekfiris. We have issues with neo Tekfiris, these new Tekfiri groups like ISIS and Shabab and Boko Haram and other deviants who are so wicked and deviant that it's, it's, uh, they become some of the greatest enemies that we faced that are still, and Allah knows best with some of them, in the fold of Islam. Likewise, the other thing. So this is some of the ikhtilaf, fasiyara ikhtilaf in Kadira. Some of the ikhtilaf that you'll see. And also those other groups, other people and individuals who call. We have many people who know, who study the method of the Salaf. And they, they just totally discard it. Some of the du'at in America. that and, and in the UK. And in Canada. And in Australia. Wherever they may be. Where they just left the principles completely. They say, now I'm in America, I'm in a different reality. Now I'm in such and such, I'm in a different reality. We're going forward while you're looking back. You're right. We're going forward, though, by looking back, amazingly enough. This is the method of the Salaf because that's going to rectify us. Not being washing away the principles of Ahl Sunnah and throwing it away and cooperating with every deviant sect and saying statements like, I would rather sit with a Sufi. Ashari than uh, uh, a harsh Salafi. No. Nah. No. No. Yes, in the sense that you may be repulsed by that person's behavior. This is a, a natural inclination. You're not going to be a one or be around a person like this. But to even utter these kind of statements shows that there's a great danger in your madhab, in your minhaj, in your methodology, because this is unknown to the Salaf. This was unknown to the Salaf. This goes against all those kawaid, all those principles of the Salaf. So, we have to be careful of these deviant methodologies and ideologies and madhahib. So the Prophet said, فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدِي فَسَيْرَى اِخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرًا that they'll see many differences, those who live after them. So again, we mentioned all those groups who are clearly away from the Sunnah. Also, we look at all the difference we, we see, unfortunately, especially in this time, between Ahl Sunnah. And I don't care who says, no, it's not. They, those people are, have gone astray. We're on the Dawah. Nah. I can... We see it in front of our faces. How many? I know so many Salafis from various camps, meaning that they disagree about one or two scholars or they, whatever the case may be, they may not even disagree on the scholars, but they just have hatred with one another. Maybe it's for uh, issues of the dunya. Maybe it's over a particular individual. Whatever the case is, there is hatred, that they hate one another. Their al-wala wal-bara is about their view and about their few brothers and about their one or two scholars or whatever the case may be. People make it al-wala wal-bara on the issue of Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili, for example, or the Awwala wal Bara on Ali Hassan al Halabi, or make it Awwala wal Bara, Sheikh Abdul Malik Ramadani is not on the Sunnah anymore because he didn't make Tabdi of Ali Hassan, or whatever the case may be, Habit And I gave some examples, and I'm sure I'll probably get questions about them. But don't ask, don't waste your time, benefit. The point being, Habit is people then making awwala wal bara loving and hating based upon an individual basing upon difference of an individual even if someone from ahl sunnah i they they're from ahl sunnah mind you and they're they're men had their aqidah everything is in agreement with ahl sunnah they're my brother i love them for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in accordance with their obedience to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their adherence to kitab illa wa sunnah rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the madhab of the salaf but we differ over individual fulani we differ over him. I believe that so-and-so is a mubtadi'ah. And they don't. I'm not going to make tabdi of this person. I'm going to give him my view because ultimately I'm not responsible for his, his belief. But I may say, yeah, I think so-and-so is a deviant and I think for these reasons, actually, you know, reflect upon that. You know, but I'm not going to make that a thing where now he over one individual... And he, maybe he has a wudge. Maybe he says, no, Achi, I'm being more patient with him. I think you, you know, yes, I believe these are mistakes, but I'm more patient with him. Bi'idnillah, he will come around. Regardless, the point being, Habatifillah, it's not really for us to, to say that because you don't believe he's a deviant, then you're now a deviant. And many of the ulama, they're speaking about this qa'idah, and you'll find that it's translated in English about the one who says that whoever doesn't make tibdi 
of a Muqtadiya is a Muqtadiya. Whoever doesn't say this innovator is an innovator, then he's an innovator. And we're, well, these are talking about people, this issue of ijtihad, meaning that this scholar sees this, but it's not, we're not saying something clear. We're not talking about someone defending a clear ashadi or a clear, uh, someone who great worship graves or something like this, but we're talking about people, individuals who were known for their khidmah to sunnah. They're known for their service to the sunnah. And then they fell into an error or some errors. And the ulama differ over this. But does that mean now we make attack? Because I promise you, it's the fitra of man. And whoever says this is, says against this, I don't know what to say to them. Because the evidence of human history shows us, even in Islam, even amongst Ahlul Sunnah, that people are never going to have the exact mokif on every particular issue. Except for those people, the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, radiyallahu ta'ala majma'een, with the Prophet ﷺ in their obedience. That which they knew was from the Prophet, they accepted without condition because he was the person who received wahi, revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But other than that, ulama throughout history have differed. That's, they've differed. Don't think otherwise. So don't think of even our scholars today with their, their, their status and so forth. That they are unlike the Salaf and their status is not like the Salaf. Understand that. Salafi scholars today are not like the Salaf of, uh, uh, of the past. We don't hold them in the same... The Salaf of the past set that minhaj for us. They codified that fiqh and those madahib and so forth. Our ulama of today are the best amongst us. And we love them for their adherence to the sunnah. And we benefit from them. And we don't put them in a level above their level. And this is very important. So, again, you'll see, as the Prophet ﷺ said, You'll see many differences, and may Allah forgive us for any mistakes we've made. Ameen. Then Sheikh Salim bin Fozan said, commenting about this, he said, When the differences appear, nothing will save a person except obedience to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah wasallam and the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa. This is the way to salvation, this is the safe path, this is the way to paradise. Therefore, we must focus on this methodology, and no one should be di diverted from it by way of those who belittle it and describe it with a debasing attribute. These people not only abuse this methodology within themselves, they also seek to disparage it amongst others. This is because they have waged war against this way. They do this because this is the truth path, and they want deviation. They want deviation. Why? Nobody, I think, deliberately wants deviation, but they want that which is in accordance with their desires. They want to follow their hawa. They want to follow that which appeals to them. The easy way out, perhaps. And that feels good. And that makes sense to them. And may Allah protect us, Amin. Therefore, beware of them, O slave of Allah. Do not suffice yourself with merely ascribing to this methodology. Do not suffice yourself with becoming self-taught individual to accurately learn the way of the Salaf in order to adhere and abide by it. It is mandatory that you display patience upon that which befalls you while traversing this path from blame, belittlement, and other than these you presently hear abuse and criticism against those who adhere to this methodology. So this is a repeat. So Imam Fozani said, he warned us, Beware, O slave of the law. Do not suffice yourself with merely ascribing to this methodology. Do not suffice yourself with becoming self-taught. Very important because we have many brothers and sisters who did not have the benefit of going uh, overseas and what have you to study with the ulama or not being raised up in a place where they could study with the ulama. So sometimes they are self-taught from books and tapes, which is also beneficial if that's all you're able to do. But with that, often you find people can fall into more error because they didn't have the tarbiya of those ulama. They weren't there in the lessons. They weren't there to, to seek direct from them. It isn't anything that rubbed off from the ulama like a powder or the beard, uh, pieces of the beard fell la. But what we're talking about, a habit of and baraka like this, no. But we're talking about there is a, a tarbiya. There are things that come out in the questions. There are many things that you gain when you're with the ulama, which is not the same ever, even from reading from their explanations in the book. That's fantastic, and you're going to get, bi'idhnillah, what you need. 
but it, you have to be careful about being self-taught and making your conclusions and, and so, so on and so forth. Then the Sheikh said, without learning and gaining from the scholars. So we need the Those who are known for their knowledge and those who are upright upon the correct path, it is upon you to abandon the deviant path that Allah has warned us against. And then he mentions the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَتَّبِيُوا السُّبُولُ فَتَفَرَكَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ And do not follow paths for they are separate, for they de de uh, separate you uh, away from his path, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's straight path. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us and bless us with ilm and nafi and riskin tayyibu wa amal al-muttaqabbinin wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.